Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is okay. It looks like we're good to go on my end here. As always, I literally just got into the studio maybe 10 or so minutes ago. Uh, lots of news today. Um, if somebody can tell me in the feed what today's topic is, what would matter above everything else, I'll send you something. I'll tell you how to send it to me in the whole works. First person who can tell me what the topic is, what I'm talking about before I talk about it, get something sent in the mail if you so wish. Uh, just FYI, we're going to get into literally what the title's talking about. It's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to get it who's in. No, no. Reputation's great, um, but... None of that matters. Nothing matters except for the, the one thing that the topic's on. We'll talk about a few other things, and then I'm going to come back into there. Nope, not consistency either. Um, let's talk about eBay for just a few minutes here because there's some new things. They've got a new uh, international shipping option coming out. I just got an article on it at eCommerce Bytes if you get a chance to hop over there. Um, it pops up in my feed, so I usually read read whatever she's got up there, but... They are replacing the global shipping program. Um, one of the questions on Nina's post was, well, what's the insurance going to be on there? Can you get extra insurance? And on and on and on and on. eBay covers on the international up to $100. What is it? Yeah, up to $100, I think is what it is. Same with global shipping. So if it costs more than that, you're out. And the only shipping insurance you can get on the new one will be shipping insurance from here to or wherever you're at to eBay's shipping facility here in this country. After that, eBay is supposed to cover it, but I don't know if they're going to cover the whole item or what. We'll have to see. The only thing I would say about a new shipping option that eBay is throwing out there is that they're too late. The, the VAT, all the extra fees are going to crush a large chunk of the international shipping options. The best part about what they're doing, and really the only real super good part, again, it's not eBay's fault in that aspect. It's their fault they're late with it. But is that um, at least everybody will know from the minute that they see your listing the exact total cost, shipping, VAT, and everything. That's what's supposed to be all worked into there. Now, I haven't heard yet either on combined shipping, which is always an issue with any of uh, eBay's international shipping options. I've never been able to get it to work. It's never worked like they said it was on a couple of occasions. And then I've seen posts where they say it wasn't supposed to work, where you can combine multiples on the shipping. So if you can combine, I might be a little happier with it. But if you can't, it's just replacing the old one with something that will just basically um, charge you a uh, loss. You'll lose if, if it gets lost a certain amount. I don't know how good of that is. It's the same people doing the new option, Pitney Bowes, as did... GS or the global shipping program. So it's the same basic everything. Uh, there's just uh, no explanation on the details other than the page. There is a landing page too, if you didn't know. Um, what else? There was something else I know I wanted to bring up today. Oh, shoot. I wished I had my notes here. I wrote them down somewhere other. I don't have them down here. Let, let's go back to the, to the, hang on, let's go back and see if anybody answered the question here yet. Yeah, I promise I'll send you out something in just a minute here. Let's see if anybody identifying fakes, note, payment, note, standing by your product, note, making money. Kim Kimberly's Addicts, close. Um, I'll hit the questions I hear in just a minute here. What you pay for the item. Hello, good evening. Cost basis, cost of goods. Good evening. If I'm not making a profit on something, nothing else matters. If I'm not going to make money, a profit on individual items, one person got kind of close to it, but profit-wise is what matters. If, if you're not looking at your items, and I want to talk about this specifically because I look, a lot at, I look at a lot of stores. I do some private things occasionally and help some people, and I help set up some professional business accounts here and there for sellers and things like that, for bigger companies occasionally. And the biggest problem that most people have, which those big companies don't have, is that they know the profit margins for every single item they have. They can instantly tell the profit margins. And after looking at hundreds of, of reseller stores, their eBay store, I mean, you know, like really looking at them. Uh, I'm surprised that the vast majority of people who sell on eBay couldn't tell me what their biggest profit margin area is. They don't know. They haven't a clue. 
And people will go along and list and say, well, I'm making money off of it. I'm making money off this. I'm making money off of that. And, you know, that's great that you're making money, but you want to get the, the highest profit margin items up and deal with those specifically. Many times I look at stores and probably a large chunk of time that I look at stores, no disrespect to me, but I did the exact same things when I first started. So this isn't a diss. This is just, you, you, you're, you're, it's the learning curve, I guess, of, of learning to resell. A lot of items people sell aren't worth your time and your investment to list them. And, and that's the end result is, is your profit margins aren't there to facilitate people selling a 10, 20, 30% of the inventory they've put up and continue to still list because by the time you think in, in sourcing time, photoing or scanning and listing and shipping and storage, for the dollar you're getting or $2 you're getting off of an item, you would have done far better to list a few less items, but for higher prices, and you would have come out better at the end of the day. You would have had a higher profit margin for the items that you sell. The average per item sale price average, that will give you a little window here. I'm not going to give you a set number because it varies by seller, but 25 to say 75 bucks is the average price of the majority of what people that I personally know sell. Low end depends on what they are. Usually the 25 or so is clothing sellers. I'm just being honest. I, I know that's not everybody. It's just the few that I know. 25 bucks is usually their their profit per item sale price you know in, into that figure up to 75 bucks for other people that sell other items ours is 47.50 or some screw screw number like that i've got it written down doesn't matter it's not the point but we've figured out if you spend a little time looking at the items that you sell category by category and figure out your time invested into them as well as how much profit margin you will make off those items you can ditch some of the items you're selling because they are costing you money. Now, who, how is it going to cost you money if you're still getting a dollar or two? If you're only getting a dollar or two and you're selling a very minuscule amount and you're only listing, say, $100 worth of merchandise an hour because you're listing these cheaper items, you could have listed less items, half as many, a quarter as many, just a little dollar value higher. And you'll get more back out of your, your efforts, your work, your time, energy, and everything. If it's not worth listing individually, you throw it in a lot and just blow it out that way. You'll come out most all of the time far better. Now, I do list a lot of individual items, but you're not seeing the for every thousand items I probably list on eBay. I've got 10,000 other items that will probably be at some point thrown in a lot. I don't do lots now at this point because I don't need to. I'm going by, again, my profit margins. So I list all the individual items that will get me a set amount, and usually these days it's 15 to 20 bucks nowadays. If it's not going to sell for, for that much, I usually don't list it anymore. If it takes more than five photos, I don't list it anymore. I'm not saying I won't list it. I'm just, at this point, we've got so many individual listing uh, items that I could list that carry a decent value. Those are what we go for. I've eliminated anything that's hit or miss. We've eliminated things that take too long to get up. Again, anything over five photos. We've eliminated the lots because of that. Again, it's, it's a temporary. We may go back to it. But at this point, with the amount of merchandise that's coming in, I've got quantity. I've got bulk purchases. Almost every single one we buy is a bulk purchase these days. It's a quick, easy purchase. Boom, we got it. We're done. Let's go. And I can list stuff immediately if I want. But the point is, I've got huge quantity of, of decent stuff. And those will get me a far better value than me listing the lots and all that sort of thing. Because of my time. We try to do 450 to 500. We're trying to push it in uh, merchandise listed per hour per person listing it. So whoever's listing it, we try to get 450 bucks to 500 up now. We're trying to increase that number too. Again, the the, the profit margin, uh, the the bottom end is what matters. Your bottom line. Did you make enough money to make it worth your while to sell this item versus that item? And I, I talk, if, if you've done this a while, if you've been into the industry, I've worked in retail, i worked in restaurants, it's a regional, so I, I've seen it in big numbers. I've seen seen the, the, the results of 
internal tests like one store sells one item or four stores usually to 20 stores and then hundreds other will sell just the normal so they run stuff in test markets every company does this and you'll see results is this item worth continuing to sell by the time we add logistics and, and stock and something on a shelf in retail establishment wise they'll pull items that, that aren't worth it one little foot in in a retail establishment could be worth a hundred thousand dollars to the company that's you know putting the product on a certain shelf if they sell enough of it it's got to be the right product it has to have a good profit margin not just for the like let's say pepsi issues a new product they've got a new uh flavor and they have a bunch out now and they want space for it if that product's not going to sell it's not worth their time. It's surely not going to be worth the, the grocery store or um, convenience store's time either to hold a product on there when it's not selling, when they could put something else on that spot that will sell. And that same philosophy works for, for resellers. If you're making $2 on something that takes you longer to list than something that you can make $15 on, why are you listing the $2 item? I guess that's the point. The, the the profit margin you get is is the biggest thing if, if you're not making money on something it doesn't matter if you can ship them out quick it doesn't matter if if you can get inventory if you're not going to make any money off of it it doesn't matter your reputation means nothing if, if you're not making money you could sell a thousand items a week and still only make 500 bucks 200 bucks 50 bucks off of that amount of items it, it's not volume necessarily it's it's the, the the profit margin how much profit are you making and the biggest thing that everybody seems to miss as well again I listed stuff that just weren't list weren't worth listing but your time is so much more important than most people give it credit for they don't even think about it most people don't even think about how much time I have into something it, again look at your your categories on eBay get the breakdown off of eBay there's two or three different ways you can look at your information you can crack it down by your store categories if you wish which I do because I've got them set up the way I want them you can also use eBay categories which I do sometimes as well and you can see which items sell more of versus which items sell for a higher profit you can figure out how much profit you're making per item per category what should I sell on eBay? I'm asked that question a hundred times a week, probably. What makes you the most money? It's all that matters. It's 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 literally what matters. I, I've got a hundred different projects I'd love to be working on all the time. I've got an animation short that we've been working on. We got thousands of dollars wrapped up into it. I've got Weebles videos that I've recorded and haven't had a chance to do this. I've got toys and stuff that we've been working on, and I I just again my my time my energy our business efforts go to what's making us the most money now i don't like to um gamble with hey maybe in the future this is going to make something or maybe this will get us somewhere maybe this maybe that i don't like to do that i like to have a clear concise pathway to go and i do that by comparing numbers comparing profit margins comparing time to list something you know if you can list a bunch 50 of something in an hour and you're going to get at least 15 bucks for it and they're a routine seller for you every day you sell something of it the profit margins you know a thousand percent versus something that you can list three or four an hour you may be lucky if you sell one of those items the first day if you're lucky and on and on and on and on so again these are all factors everybody should be paying attention to it comes down to the bottom line if if you're not making money this this industry isn't going to give you any bonus you're not going to get anything out of this you're just going to be sinking a lot of time and effort into it and spinning your wheels and getting nothing back out of it nothing matters if you're not making a profit off of it nothing nothing matters if you're not making a profit off of it and that's the end of it there, there's nothing else matters it doesn't matter how many boxes how much inventory i have reputation even you know money in the bank if you're not making money off of this your business isn't going to to go anywhere so again that's that's my take on it you have to have the margins there for whatever you sell when uh, i worked for restaurants for an example we had a break-even point so if, if a restaurant i'll get an einstein brothers i ran einstein brothers for years we had 31 stars under my region i was a regional manager and when you um didn't get a certain number the store wasn't making money they were costing the company money most of the stores that run like an um einstein brothers and this was years ago so i'm sure it's not the same it was about eight thousand dollars for my region on average 
Some of them, the overhead was more because of the location cost more for the, the per square foot and on and on. So that's an average. So if a store didn't make at least $8,000 in a week, the store was losing, was costing the company money. And that's the same thing. There's items that I look at routinely in people's stores that are probably that probably cost them money. Not cost them money just to get the item, but cost them more money than they will get out of it because of their time, because of the effort they put into it. You know, once it's up, just leave it. But, you know, there's a lot of things you shouldn't list. Some items you should maybe combine them and, you know, make a, a lot that way. If you don't have a lot of inventory, go after those five plus photo items. Go after the lots. Go after all that stuff. Because it'll be worth your time if you don't have enough inventory and on and on and on. So it really, it depends too, obviously, you know, where you're at and your, your spot in your business. It, it's still, though, not practical to list $2 items no matter how many you can get up, no matter how routinely they sell when you figure out your dollar per hour doing that. If you can get 20 up, you got 40 bucks for an hour's worth of your time. That's before taxes. That's not worth your time. I, I, 40 bucks would be a joke for, for, you know, a bigger store. And I'm not that, no offense, that's not meant as offense, but you've got to think like you're, the, you're, you're at the big table right from the start and think about what's so important to you. How are you going to feed the kids? How are you going to put a roof over your head? How are you going to pay your car insurance or whatever the case may be? You've got to get your margins up. Your profit margins are what matters. I, I can't speak that enough of how important, truly important, and how much that should be the one thing that's the biggest thing in your business, especially if you're not doing well, or especially if you're floundering, especially if you're not sure you know, what to do or where you're going with your store. You can't get the numbers up. You're still str uh, struggling. You haven't made a dent in it. You're, you're trying to put in hours. I talk to people, you know, quite often that are going to have to go and, and go back to a regular employment and things like that. They can't make it work. But you, right off the bat, from, from day one, you should be looking at profit margins. I, 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 I can't stress it. I looked at two people's stores just real quickly today. And, and the same basic principle is there that their, their items are too cheap. They were piddling around with, with cheaper stuff. Again, no offense. I'm not going to call any names or anything else. I told them I'd probably bring them up too, but that's a huge deciding factor on everything I do these days. I'd love to do projects. I'd love to go out and go sourcing and go to more thrift stores and hit some, some estate sales. It's been a year or two since I've been to an estate sale. I was I was gonna try meet up with Paper Goy, uh, Million Dollar Peddlers, and even a, another a patron. I don't want to call it names because I didn't say I would. But um, at uh, Flea Market in Springfield, I didn't get to go. We had too much going on. Um, Halloween's right up around the corner, and I've been selling. I, I do models and toys, and I've been swamped with orders for those, which I never get all at once like I did. And I had to do produce a whole bunch. I got a couple more since the last call out on those, and. Again, thing, things happen, and that's where my, my time went because those are good money. It's $200 a pop profit, you know, for nothing else other than advertising, you know, free advertising on a toy site. I sold some on some toy sites and things like that, too. Just I've got action figures we've designed, and I've got Weebles we've got production. I even, even have my, my um, injection mold done, ready, the solid metal one, and I still haven't had a chance to get into those, but... Let's pop up here and see. Again, I know I ramble a lot, but uh, let's see. Craftomatic. So fun I found uh, today. Where are we at? Found a small authentic glass fishing float with most of its netting still intact. I, I actually have always liked the uh, glass floats. I think that video was two days ago. Yesterday I was up to here doing, making uh, casting molds and stuff and, and uh, figures and so we've been selling a bunch of other items. I do more than just eBay. We do toy lines, and I've got some other things. I, I write for Ina and a couple that I ghost write for somebody else. And Anyway, things things get really busy. But I do love glass floats. We've got quite a big collection, only from sourcing. It wasn't intentional. You know, for what I paid for them, we just hung on to them. Every time I find some, I just hang on to them. Tone Morris, uh, well, thank you very kindly. 1970s pins. Yeah, I picked up a few. Well, I say a few. I picked up about 60 rock, uh, like rock concert pins, Rolling Stones. There's a Zeppelin in there, ACDC. Um, uh, there's a Swan Song. There's a couple Swan Song logos, pins in there. Stuff. All originals. I love that sort of stuff. Pins are great. 
some rock concert rock you know rock group pins can sell for a couple hundred bucks a piece up to four or five hundred i've seen some just the little tiny enamel ones i love pins pins we've done uh gee since probably 20 years i've been doing pins well thank you very kindly tone morris and craftomatic and to antiquarian bookman how are you doing I just picked up some uh, leaves from uh, 1577, and I also picked up some from 1570 or 1597, I think is the other one. I hate getting off the camera, but I've got some sitting up there. They're 400 and what would that be, 45 years old, some pieces of paper, and they're basically leaves out of um, some Bibles, early Bibles. I've talked about it before. I do fairly good with those sorts of things. Um, I used to buy them all the time. I just haven't had a chance to fool around with them, but an opportunity was out there, so I took advantage of it. Uh, disgruntled octopus, how are you doing? Good evening, good evening. Our shower curtain is a giant octopus, actually, and it's been that way for a while. In fact, we bought it off of Amazon. It's one of those designer, like a gray and blue. It's it's like a Art Deco pattern. Love animals. I love octopus too. But uh, May, hey, how are you doing? Another Hawaiian. We've got several folks from Hawaii in house. Good to see you all. Mr. Hale, how are you doing, Mr. Hale? I will have a Patreon video out tomorrow with everything going on. With um, I've got it all done. I just haven't had a chance to even look at it. I finished all the responses, I think it was yesterday. Um, so there's probably some new emails since then, but I'll get to all those tomorrow. I wanted to get all my stuff out before today and have all the models done, painted, mounted, boxes open, and all that kind of stuff. We kind of did an assembly line and poured the molds full. You can see I've got a video on doing the clowns. I've sold quite a few clowns. I've had to do quite a few sets of three at a time. I usually do them these days three at a time. I used to do them one-offs, but now I can't. I sell enough of them now, surprisingly. We've made thousands off of that sort of thing, too, so I'm, I'm not complaining. I, I've sold... Quite a few just in one week, which is something I usually don't do. It's usually maybe one a week if I'm lucky. But um, no, that's another one of those passive income things that we do, um, as well as some of the books for those in Patreon. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to holler it out here. But the it's this the one little uh, thing you do here that's passive income, like the toys or models, or I do dioramas. I do some book-related stuff, too, where I'm really not doing anything. All that stuff adds up. Each item may only get you 100 bucks profit, but when you add up six, eight things, you know, that's six, eight hundred dollars possibly an extra week when you're doing it like that. So every little bit helps. And I know people say, oh, it's only a few bucks. I'm not going to mess with it. Well, it's easy money. I would recommend doing it. Again, profit margins, you know. I don't like to get the last minute calls on, you know, hey, can you make so many of these by such and such a deadline? I'll remember next year for Halloween to see how it goes. And make some some more. I do I do one of um, one of the killer clowns from outer space, and I've done that for. Geez, I I think I made the mold like three or four years ago, and I've luckily uh, been able to. The mold's still good, you know. I've been very careful, and I've been making it. I'll probably wear that mold out. I've made so many. I actually saved the very first one I ever cast that came out mint. Just for uh, so I can mold another copy of it if I need to make another you know mold of it. Anyway, I know I'm rambling, but I love that sort of thing. Um, hey, hey, I might have missed your thoughts and feedback about whatnot. You know, I haven't done another whatnot, and honestly, I've had a lot of people asking that. I've done four whatnots on average per whatnot. I'm maybe making. 70 bucks an hour or so and it's just not worth 70 bucks an hour for me to continue to do that for the what would i almost have like 10 hours into maybe more than that probably more like 12 hours i think is what we, i wrote it all down but so probably about 12 hours i think if i'm, I'm thinking right about 70 bucks an hour is about average it, it just wasn't worth it for me in all honesty we made you know some money why well, nowhere near what I would have liked. I had to pay an employee and, you know, I had on the last two, I've got a 50% rate of people not paying. So half the time they, there's somebody who doesn't pay. And I know people said, well, you can tell, you can tell. Well, you can't tell until the very last minute when the show ends. What, what, what not told me is you have to wait to the end of the show to do anything about it. And the only thing you can do is just resell it. And if I'm going to have to spend 20 minutes of a show on whatnot showing an item, 
and then having to re-show it again, though that 70 bucks isn't going to be 70 bucks, it's gonna be like 60 bucks. And again, I can make 60 bucks doing almost anything else besides whatnot. So I'm not, I'm not gonna probably do another whatnot. It's just not worth the time or effort, I don't think. Maybe for some random bulk items and stuff like that, but I, I, I haven't, I haven't done one in what a month or two, maybe three months. I don't know. I did four of them, as I said, and and I gave it a shot. I looked at the numbers. You know, they were doing a record one this weekend, I think, or something, or last weekend. Man, I think it is this weekend. And with the shipping costs, again, it's not worth it because they they promised, hey, it's a dollar extra and all this for the second item, and that's not the case. The, the every uh, record one I did, I had complaints about the shipping costs and you know some of the items that were were uh, not paid for were records. So uh, that really bugged me. So you know there's no way to catch that. There's no built in to say, hey, they're not going to have to pay for it. There's no mandatory this. They can you know it's not like on eBay where you know it goes through or uh, I don't have to sit there and run a live show. I can just change the quantity from zero to one and I'm done. It's already still running all the time. I don't end my listings. I let them sit there on um, zero quantity. Now, I, let's let's talk about zero quantity because I've, I've had people say, well, you're hiding your stuff. You're doing this. You're doing that because I'm using zero quantity. I sell on many platforms. I get large quantities of things in. I've got Maybe a 30th of all the items out of 30,000 items in my store, I have replenishables of. So, and also when somebody cancels or it sells on one site and that person doesn't pay for it or something happens, all I got to do is change the quantity on uh, in the system from zero to one and it, it's never ended. So I don't lose my watchers. Uh, if there are any, I don't lose anything tied to it. The listing is just there. I just change the quantity from zero back to one, and then boom, I don't have to sell similar. I don't have to list. I do sell similar later on, but I don't have to do anything to get that item active again other than change the quantity. I don't even have to click edit. I don't have to uh, even go into the listing. You can change the quantity from your hub listing tab at any time you want. I got tape on me, sorry, but... Anyway, that's that's my take on whatnot. I probably, unless you know, I want to get rid of some bulk, won't mess with it. You know, I thought about selling some 50-pound boxes of records, but again, I don't want to have to drive down and, and carry 10 or 15 of those into the, the post office. I wouldn't have my postal lady pick them up here because that'd be a lot of weight. I'd have to call ahead and let them know that I'd fill up half the van and all that kind of stuff too, or their their little their little uh, mail truck. So I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think, mess with whatnot too much. You may see one in the future, but you know, I don't like the way they've got the calendar where if you're lucky, you can get a spot and people were taking three and four spots. And anyway, I, it just, it's just not set up very, very prop. It's not set up right. You know, even the replies I've gotten from them just weren't, I'm not impressed at all. Just truth. I know there's a lot of people said, oh, we're making a ton of money. But when I look again, profit margin, looking at my profit margin, it's far lower than anything else I do. You know, even selling on other sites, I'm just clicking a button and syncing with other sites. I don't. It doesn't cost me anything. You know, for the amount of time and effort, I could have had four or five hundred dollars of merchandise up per hour instead of seventy bucks worth of sales. And yeah, I'm not going to sell every item I list for four or five hundred dollars worth of value up per hour at right off the bat. But it's there forever. I never have to recreate it. I never have to show it again on on a on a live auction, but. Um, setting up your business as a business. If you don't have a profit margin, you don't have a business. You don't even have to file taxes if you're not making money. You know, if you, if you haven't made a profit, you're not. You're it's eaten up by your expenses. You're not making any money. It's not even a business. It barely would qualify for a hobby, almost in some extent. But um, all the answers were good. Everybody's saying that's all important. Reputation, consistency. Um, payments, of course, stand by your products. Yes, that comes back sort of tied to, to reputation, identifying fakes. That's all good stuff. You got to know all that too, but profit margins is definitely number one. Do I not plan Elijah Hung's Meyer Baxter? Do you not plan on posting on Art Professor anymore? I do. I've got some videos. Just again, it comes down to 
where's my time um, more useful? Where am I going to get the most bang for my buck, I guess? We've got, we're down employees, to be honest with you, too. And part of that's been, been a little struggle. And I don't bring just anybody in to work for us. And, you know, we're working on a couple other people right now. It takes time. So I don't have as much backup, I guess, as I did before. So things change. My kids are, in, are took a, you know, full-time job with benefits and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, that's what they wanted to do. I know I've never, ever forced my kids to work for me. You know, they never have been required to do anything they don't want to do. And they wanted a, a job where they can, you know, make, you know, good money. They go into college, one's graduated. And so that's, I'm down employee. So that's part of, part of why I don't get a chance to do other things. I'd, I'd love to do some more art videos. I've, I record stuff when I'm doing stuff for me. I just haven't done anything with the videos. I've got hours of videos. If I'm drawing or something, I almost always record it. I just haven't had a chance to produce anything from all those recorded things. Um, I recorded me doing some more uh, molds and, and stuff today, actually, and the last three days. It just began because it only takes a couple minutes to set up a GoPro or one of the other cameras in a tripod or my mount. I just haven't had a chance to post. Again, the most important thing is is my profit margin. Kim Kimberly's attic is the closest, but profit is the word I was looking for. No idea. Pricing is important. Passion drive, customer service, list is endless. Yeah, the list is endless for some things, but if you're not making a profit, nothing else matters. There's only one thing that matters. If you work in the real world in a brick and mortar, if you're not making profit, you're you're not going to be in business very long. Because you're paying for overhead, you're paying for fees, you're, you're heating, your electricity, you're driving around, you're buying merchandise or shipping in merch. All that stuff costs money. And again, if you're not making anything out of it, everything else is, 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 doesn't matter. It's totally useless stuff if you can't make a profit off of what you're selling. Most people go out of business because they're not making profit. They're not going out of business because they, they missed something or they weren't super, super psyched or pumped about it or, or they didn't have a drive necessarily. They, they're not making money off of it. Money, the profit margins is number one. That's like the top three, number one, number two, number three. The ones, the, the sellers that I know that do the best every time, I, I'm hand to God, every time, every time I run into a seller that's doing really good, really good across the board, all they're, 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 you know, dotting all their I's, crossing all their T's, everything is rolling along, they're, they're in the same boat position as we are, they can get the merchandise, their profit margins are good, and they know every single item in their store, what the profit margins, which categories at least, if nothing else, they know the categories, and, and I can ask them, well, why do you sell this? Well, the profit margin's better. Why, why haven't you stopped selling that? Well, there's no profits there. They, they instantly know that. They're paying attention to that. They, they treat it just like I do, like I, I'm working for some big company. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm running a region or something. I treat this like that. I treat it, my job as a regional was to figure out where the problems were, to fix things when the numbers weren't coming in. I'd go to a store, figure out why their counts were off, inventory was wrong, their, their, their food cost was really high, chances are they got a new cook. Chances are people may be stealing in the store, taking steaks home. That was usually the biggest one. In a restaurant chain, for an example, you categorize it by item. I know I sh I've sold 72 sirloins. I purchased 100. I should still have 28 left. If I don't have 28, I got now 8. Someone swiped 20. Again, if, if they sell it, it gets damaged. You're supposed to report those. You know, any spoilage is reported. So if you got to throw away five of something, you take that off the list. So again, these are things that the managers never thought about. They couldn't figure out, or this happens, or, or um, here's one I caught. They're one of the stores I worked for. I took it over, and I was there for a little while. And the produce company turns out they weren't uh, doing their obligations. I won't say it. This was in Meridian, Mississippi. And the produce company that they, they signed a deal with quoted this much price for a boxes. Well, it turns out they've been charging the store and the store never looked at it until I got in there. I wanted to see where every dime was going and the company was charging them like a dollar 50 for a delivery charge or some screwy charge for every single box that showed up there for the last three years. So I sure as enough pulled out the invoices and counted up all the boxes, sent that to my company and act and sent it to the produce company. And I got my full bonus as well as every manager under me did 
for the food costs just because of that, because I got a check for every box for the last three years. They didn't go back and amortize it. They didn't go back and, and you know, um, balance it out from prior years. I got all the credit for that. It saved, it was like 78, it was a huge amount of money, close to $100,000. It, it was a no-brainer, though. It was, it was looking at your contracts, looking at stuff like that. Those are simpleton things. Looking at the price you pay something in, your purchase price matters. All that stuff matters. But again, to get a profit, you got to make sure everything else is in line. But if you don't have a profit, you're screwed. That's why at least three people this week have said that they're not going to be able to continue to do this to me personally. I think it's actually four this week. Again, because they're not they're they're not making the profits, they're not getting the stuff in. Again, it may be for various different reasons, but you know, I'm I'm not gonna go back into the restaurant chain. I'm not going back into retail. So if I work 14 hours, I'm happy with that. You know, I don't I don't mind. At some point, I may not be able to do it, so I'd rather do it now and relax when I'm older, and and you know, get all the 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 revenue coming in now. You know, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I'd rather have that bird sit in my hand right now than worry about it 10 years from now or something. So anyway, let's pop back over to the chat. I know I'm rambling. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, please slam that thumbs up here. I got 172 people in house, 49 thumbs up. I know I'm terrible on saying that, but where are we at here? Regional manager FY. Well, thank you very kindly. Appreciate that. I was a regional manager, as I said. District manager, DM. For many years for Einstein Brothers um, views and searches again views and searches views mean nothing to me you know the search and view that whole that means nothing even watchers unless I can send an offer to them I don't even look at it I haven't looked at my views in forever views mean nothing you can sell something and it won't even show a view up there views again they're, they're totally meaningless it only takes one person to come in, see the item, and buy it. And that's it. So I don't really care if it's got 50 views, 100 views, or what. It's, it's meaningless information when you're selling um, long tail items and, and it basically turns it to passive income. And, and there's, it's, it's meaningless information for me. I don't, once the item's up, it stays up. It doesn't matter you know, if it sells today, tomorrow, or next year. Quantity and volume make long tail items work. If you didn't have quantity, long tail would not be your thing. You would not want to do long tail if you don't have quantity. If you're working up to get long tail, you start off doing 5 or 10% long tail and 90, 95%, you know, quick flipper as quick as you can get. That's That would be the best take on it. Um, Ariel Miller, yeah, what you pay for it, that semi comes down to profit, but hey, Daryl, Carolina Picks in the house. Welcome, welcome, Daryl. Good to see you in. Better buys, online sales, welcome. Hey, Dave, Midwest Picker, another YouTuber in-house. How you doing, Dave? Check Dave out if you get a chance. He seems to be a very nice guy. He's got a sense of humor, too, I have seen. Noah D, cost basis, cost of goods. Profit, again, profit margin is the biggest thing. If your profit margin's terrible, you're not going to pay your bills and nothing else will matter. The whole point is to pay your bills. You have to have a profit from what you're doing. You have to be, your time, again, it comes back to time. And, and too many people just waste their time and don't realize how much time they're wasting. Melanie Kimball, Majolica information. I could go on and on. I've got a couple pieces here. That would be a whole case in and of itself. LMB320. No uh, notifications. I'm I almost never put up um, my video announcement for a live feed the day before. If I put up my my uh, post for my live show, uh, you know, at least a day in advance, everybody would probably get a bigger notification notice. But I don't. I literally just posted it an hour before. I work like mad these days, and um, again, if I did it, I'd probably get more views and make a little more money. But I'm I'm not really worried about that on this. Uh, so that's probably why you don't get a notification very often for my live shows. They're always Thursday at 7 unless something's going on. Brenda Bloom, welcome, welcome. Matt Jake, how are you doing? Douglas Lockhart, usually I can't use USPS uh, priority shipping when I combine anything. It only gives me U uh, UPS, FedEx. I can use whatever. I've never had it do anything else 
for uh, just standard shipping US, so I'm always able to combine. And if you can't combine with the invoice, all you do is you ship the first item and then you just go back and add the tracking number to the other items and boom, you've just combined them. Just make sure you calculate and refund any shipping that's over what the, the amount is. We do it all the time. I, you don't have to combine them on an invoice even if, if that's the case. Somebody will buy something from us and this happens almost every day and they'll see something else later, not even realize it's us, and then buy something else, and then go, hey, I didn't realize this was you, can you combine them? And they've paid for them both. So all I do is, well, with those I'll combine on eBay, but regardless, if it's something, uh, sometimes eBay you know, is, is not working right or something, all I do is just print the first one. If they're all going in the same box, the same person being shipped on the same day, all you gotta do is add the, the tracking number to the second item, the third, I fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, however many items you got in there that wouldn't combine through eBay, and boom, they're already combined. They're all set to the same one. As long as the person you're shipping them to is the same person, you can combine a ton of them that way. Just paste the, the tracking number. It's not going to tell you, hey, you've already used this tracking number. If it's going to the same person within a 24-hour time span. I've done it for years. We just did it the other day, so I know you can still do it. And we're on eBay's new, the item-specific um, cell phone look mobile uh, listing thing, too. Um, hey, Joe Sonard, how are you doing? Good afternoon where you were at, I see. Regional manager FY. Yeah, the higher the margins, the better. And that's like, again, what I look at. I, I stopped selling so much. Clothing for us was one of my lowest margins. My lowest profit margins has been clothing. And it was, we were selling similar items. Why am I selling what I sell now? The profit margins are better. Easier storage, easy to pick up, buy in bulk, almost never return, no chance of me missing something. I mean, there's just so many reasons. The pros and cons of clothing versus what I sell are incredibly insane uh, in my, my favor for what I sell. So, you know, that's the, that's the biggest factor. I'm looking at the profit margins. I've got oodles of stuff I could throw up in lots. I, I even lotted up some buttons just because I've got so many and I did those and whatnot. But, uh, you know, it's just not worth selling something that's too cheap. It's You're going to be spinning your wheels on cheap stuff that's not going to make you much per hour. Your time is going to be wasted. So anyway, where are we at? jdad303 well thank you very kindly for the five dollar super chat love the videos i watch them as i work daily at my ebay shop sure got me looking for paperbacks these days i named the shop tianzo after my son well very good very good interesting name for sure very nice name well thanks again jdad303 for the super chat really appreciate it oh where are we at where are we at Murphy's Mercantile. How are you? How are you guys doing over there? Hopefully you're doing well. Low Country Loft. I wonder what Low Country. There's a lot of places that they call Low Country. I'm having shipping problems that were not there until I listed some of my items one day shipping. I'm so discouraged. eBay can't fix it. Not knowing what the shipping problems are, just ship it off a of pirate ship or a PayPal until it's corrected. If it, if it's an issue where you can't print how you want the way you want, that's all I would do. Uh, and hopefully if you're having issues you've got policies business policies set up for the shipping and i would have done if i was going to start a new policy i would have kept the old policy as well and just created a new one for the listings that i wanted that way if something happens i can switch all of my listings from one policy to another one in 10 seconds business policies if you're not using business policies to do your shipping that that that's your biggest problem right there the, the business policies for shipping are awesome for the most part, and I never have to go back in and mess with them once I got them set up. You can do separate costs for international versus uh, versus U.S. So my U.S. has free return shipping for 30 days. My foreign overseas has the buyer pays it for the return shipping. So uh, again, you can set them up differently. You can, you've got global shipping and the whole works, um, whatever you want. And that's what I do for everything. I've got, I think, eight 
uh, shipping policies, one payment policy, and then one return policy. My payment policy is the same for every item, so I only need one. My return policy is the same. I've got it broken down. Just like I said, U.S. is free return shipping, and then overseas is buyer pays for return shipping. That's what I would recommend for everything, personally. Um... Your system seems highly functional and profitable. Let's go through the roof. Uh, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm comfortable with the sales coming in right now. Let's put it that way. I'm happy with what's going on. I'm not discouraged by the sales because I'm almost at a fourth quarter mark right now. And again, I'm working the store constantly though. Every day, every two days I run sales. I'm doing end and sell similar three times on my store a month flipping my items over so no items you know sitting up more than say 10 or, or 14 days at the very very most uh we've been mixing up that a little bit but i'm always working on the store i'm always doing something someone's always sending out offers to watchers someone's always you know tweaking stuff or doing something all that action has helped us and maintain my sales across the board if you're not doing action on your account on a routine basis it gets stagnant amazon's the same way if you're not messing around with your account, if you don't do anything in your account in so so certain length of time, they might even, you know, suspend it for a length until you contact or update or fill out or something too. So, uh, Tone Morris, Donna, I source mainly from storage auctions, nothing over 40. Is there really a way to look at your p &L if I'm basing it on luck of the draw? I would never give out my numbers, but I do have a copy of what I use for my P&L and, and Patreon. But um, again, I, my P&L has everything in it. It's not just reselling. It's I've got a P&L for the entire business. I do have P&Ls for reselling versus like toys and art and stuff like that. But I don't share any of my personal stuff like that. Be like my tax documents. I don't share that either, obviously, but. Um, nothing over 40 bucks, huh? I would look at other, other sourcing avenues if, if I was you personally. Um, uh, Wade, Wade's Ventures. He does storage auctions. And I, we've talked before in the past. He seems, always seems like a nice guy. His family man has got kids in the whole works. I know he had said once before to me that like four out of, hundreds of storage units he did extremely well and the most all the storage units are you know you're going to make some money but it's not going to be these fifteen thousand dollar profits and all that kind of stuff i've seen some that he's had that it were really good on average storage auctions are so hit or miss i wouldn't rely on those personally uh, maybe a sideline or something but i sure as heck wouldn't do that personally personally uh, again i'm not in the best area for for high-end storage lockers showing up california obviously would be the best or miami or something but you know uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't base my sourcing on storage storage auction for one i'm not going to be able to get routine in the same niches for for one that would kill a lot of my repeat business uh, it would kill the collector area because how often would I get collectibles that would be in the same categories? I wouldn't be able to flood or dominate categories by doing that either because it would be random items. I, I so dislike random items these days. Um, like I don't, I haven't been in a garage sale and I don't know how long. I haven't been to a state sale in a year or two. If we go to a, a thrift store, I'm not really going to source. You know, we're going to look for something or we're out, we're down the street, let's swing in there for a few minutes or something. I, I don't, again, profit margin. I, there's not The profit margin's not there for any of that, so I don't do that much anymore. I figured something else out that works for us. Uh, try better, better uh, storage lockers. Go up in value, buy better ones, more expensive ones. Check out a different area, maybe even if you're you're gung ho on the storage storage uh, locker auctions and stuff. But I personally don't like the hit or miss. I just I just don't like it, you know. And there's been some where some of the items were stolen. Somebody I know had to deal with that, and they lost the. It, it goes on and on. There's all kinds of things that could happen. I know somebody else who was sued that they bought a storage locker, fair and square, 
And the family said they were a family heirloom. Out and there was records and personal documents, and they got sued. It, it, it just was a fiasco. There's just too many, too risky of a thing to it. Some items in the storage locker may have personal stuff on it that you may not be able to sell. Some maybe promotional items for some other company, and on and on and on. There's legalities on some items. Uh, hey, Trina. Trina Stark, how are you doing this evening? As a beginner, I am hearing that I should sell cheaper until eBay gives me a higher rank. I don't know who's telling you that, but cheaper is no. I don't know why that would have any play in anything. That's very bad advice. Sell the best things you can get from day one. There's there's no... The more, the better stuff you sell, the more value you are selling, the better you're going to do and everything else with eBay. The, the ranking or anything else has nothing to do with that. Cheaper items are, are just that. They're cheaper items that you're going to make less money on and you're going to get less value for your time into it. Anybody saying that, I wouldn't pay any attention to them. That would be my personal opinion. I would avoid anybody saying something like that. Let it go out you in one year and out the other one if they're telling you that. That's very bad advice. Sell the best things you can sell right off the bat. You know, that that's my take on it. Don't be piddling around. Don't be wasting your time. It's, it's profit margin. You're giving away your profit margin if you're selling just cheap items just to sell cheap items. Makes no sense. The only thing I would ever say is if, if you've got bad feedback, bad feedback, and you want to, you know, blow some of that out, you blow out some really cheap 99 cent sales or something and sell a whole bunch of stuff really cheap and do a phenomenal job getting it out immediately. And, and your, your, your goal is to get a whole bunch of... Uh, comments and feedback really quickly by doing stuff like that. That's the only time I ever see people where it's a good thing in an occasion is to do something like that. If you want to help you know, uh, lower your, your defect uh, percentage, that's what you do. You list a whole bunch of stuff for real cheap, really cheap. You know, I've seen people even basically, you know, below cost or at cost and not make anything just to try and turn around their feedback. That's the only reason I would ever say lower your items like that. I, I don't race to the bottom. I don't I don't do any of that crap. It's it's not it's not my thing. If somebody else wants to do it, that's fine. Like with the collectibles. I had somebody and I'm not gonna go into details on this one, but somebody was saying, Well, I got this item cheaper than you. Why why would anybody want to pay for it and buy it from you? And I said, Well, I, I don't care if they buy it from me or you. You know, it's not I, there's nothing I can do about it anyway. If you want to price it cheaper, fine. The minute yours is sold, I'm the only one up again. I don't have to sell today, tomorrow. The, the, maybe they have to sell it to pay their bills or something. But I don't have to do that. So if my item's higher than somebody else, I don't care. Their item's going to sell probably first. And then I'm, again, dominating the area again with that item. It's going to set up. I'm not going to take it down. What does it matter? Uh, again, long tail game works fine for me. My annual uh, EBIT increases are just a positive reinforcement one needs to gauge success. I have to say, when I see a massive deposit in my bank account from a weekly payout or for something, that, that's a big thrill, you know. And I'm I'm not I'm not meaning that I'm money grubber and I don't wear anything fancy. I'm not into all that stuff. I, I just know that you know it, it feels good to know that I earned every damn dime of that money that's going into that bank. No one helped me. No one showed me anything. No one's well. Some work on the on the P and L. Somebody helped me put that together, Lou. But Everything else is mine. Everything else I did, I earned that. If you're working for somebody else, you earned your money too. But to be honest, having worked for somebody for years of my life, it feels so much better. It's so different to earn it yourself, have it your company. You're getting the every bit of the profits. You're not sharing it. It's all mine. You know, pay my taxes and, and that's about it. But, you know, that's another thing that uh, there's going to be some people getting into some big issues come the end of the year who haven't saved up money. We send off seven grand, I think, five, six times a year to, to the IRS to pay off our, our um, taxes ahead of time. Oh, here's a new one you're going to have to worry about on eBay, just to let you know. We got a notice from eBay requiring us to submit a federal ID to continue to collect payments from eBay. And I think from what I was told is they're hitting all of the bigger sellers first if I'm not mistaken. So I should have taken a screenshot, but I wasn't going to show the process because you'd have to show information. But we've already done it. I don't have a problem. I already had a copy of it. You got to do it for whatnot. I think I had to do it for and Amazon. You surely have to do it. 
So if you didn't know, if you want to sell on Amazon, you've got to send them a copy of your driver's license front and back or your, you could have used your passport card or something too. But So if, if you haven't received a notice from eBay saying you're going to have to supply your, your photo ID, you're going to get one of those. Again, they're probably phasing it in over time. So I would, again, imagine that they're going to get the biggest sellers first. They want to check your identity. It's going to be something you're going to expect. So I think that's going to stop some certain percentage of people from selling on eBay anymore if they have to show personal information like that. I know people got all upset about, you know, having to share a bank account. Uh, you know, the driver's license will be another one of those nails in some people's coffins where they'll give up on eBay. Or, I'm not going to. You know, if you really want to, if they really need it, now I've got it at other platforms. Why would I say no to eBay and uh, trust some other platform in the first place? Which, you know, that's the way it is. So if you didn't know that, that they're coming around. I, in fact, it, it was a big black banner at the top of my hub. So there's no way I was going to miss it. And it doesn't, there's no way to clear it off until you sub, uh, fill it in. And it gave me, I think it was three weeks and two days from the time it first popped up to fill it out. I just did it right away because I don't really care. But again, it's it's the world we live in. You either do what they want you to do or you don't sell on the platform. And I'm, I'm not, I'm making enough uh, money profit off of eBay. I would never, you know, give it up at this point unless it's below that 25% mark. I've said that forever. Is At 25% of reselling revenue, it wouldn't be worth my time. I could easily, you know, make up the difference. We're 15% higher than that, so again, I'm not going to do it. Uh, Josh Gall, eight dollars is my minimum profit. That's not terrible, but again, then it comes down to how much time are you including your list time? Are you including your sourcing, your packing, all that? That's part of it. If it takes you an hour to make that eight dollars you need to raise it. It needs to be higher than $8 profit. Because if it, if it, if, or if you can only do three of those types of items that you're going to get $8 profit on in an hour, I mean, packing, listing and all that stuff, it's $8 an hour is what you're making or $24 would be in that case if you're getting three up. So think of it that way. Don't necessarily think of it as specifically profit. As I said, your time has to be a huge considering factor in whatever you're doing. Why would I spend time listing $2, $2 items that take five minutes a piece to list when I can list 10 or $15 items that only take a minute, maybe a minute and a half to list, and there's no huge ordeal. I can store it instantly, large quantities in one small area, instantly. I'm, again, paper works best for me because it's the easiest thing. Uh, day before yesterday, somebody bought 55 lots, one single person. And that's not some oddball thing. I've sold over 100 to the same person. Again, I sell items in categories that, that, are, are, uh, that that happens to frequently. I sell items that most people, or most days, I'll sell two, three, four or more items to one single person or two single people, two different people buying that many, which is a typical day for us here. If I sold other items, I wouldn't get that push. So I could sell items that might get me about the same amount of money as what I'm selling now, but I don't get multiple sales from those other items. Maybe the, the return repeat customer business from those items aren't as good as the ones that I'm selling now. So again, profit margin is first, and then I go after issues like that. Am I going to get repeat business? Does someone keep coming back if I sell this item versus that item? So again, pros and cons list. Pros and cons of whatever I sell paper for what I sell, I, I'm very happy with paper. On, on a given day, I could get a $700 or $700 profit on one single day from just the paper stuff, you know, and maybe only have five, eight bucks invested into that $700 on top of it. And maybe even already have the money back a year ago because the, the items have been up for a year. I mean, that's the kind of thing that I, I work with. And that's the kind of thing that I try to center in on. You know, if you're going to get something that may only sell once a year, you know, I don't really look through sell-through rate other than the category specifically itself. If an item in the, say, the military World War II section routinely sells, you know, uh, <clears throat> has a 50% sell-through rate in a year's time, I'm pretty pretty happy with that. If it had a 2% or a 5%, that's a different story. If those same items, there was 400 of them active and only 10 sold, I wouldn't mess with it either. 
because it wouldn't be worth my, my chance, time, or investment to sell something. That would be a flooded category. Once you hit anything over 20 or 30 of the same items up, that's fairly flooded in my book. Clothing-wise, you might see 100, 150 of the exact same items you're, you're trying to sell now, a t-shirt or something, unless it's vintage or something unique or something different. Again, that's, that's just my take. Um... Well, time and money comes into play together in my book. My profit margin includes the time I have invested into it. That's why I, how do, why do I look at time? I look at time because I want to be able to get four fifty to five hundred dollars worth of merchandise up in an hour. So I'm 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 looking at the time aspect as well as the the, the profit, the margin I'm going to get, how much money I'm going to make for my hours worth of time. So my profit margins are based on time as well as the, the actual dollar amount. Hopefully that makes sense. Because if, if you know, profit margins are, are great, of course, most important aspect. But if the profit margin is like 0.05%, that means nothing again. So you, you've really got to weigh out everything that goes with getting the profit margin the best. So if I sell something that I'm going to sell for four from a specific niche to the same person on, on a daily basis, those items give me a higher profit margin. I'm combining my time. I'm cutting the time to wrap four individual items or ten individual items down into wrapping them all into one, one single plastic sleeve all together. They're wrapped up into one piece of cardboard instead of four, four five, six, eight, ten different pieces of cardboard. I'm not wasting ten poly bags. They're all going together. So uh, selling items that have repeat business or that somebody might buy multiple different items in that same niche raise your profit your profit margin because instead of selling say a, a twenty dollar item to one guy that one guy may have bought five twenty dollar items so i'm selling a hundred dollars to this guy my initial cost on those items maybe four or five bucks and i'm not worried about some one shipment my time's cut down again we're coming back to time again so i stick to items that i sell more of you know, multiples to the same person on a daily basis over items that are, are one-offs or, you know, I, I won't have that approach going on or maybe seasonal or something else like that. Again, if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. I got 182 people in house. I got 84 thumbs up at this point. Uh, Don Albertson of Pawn Shop told me they won't buy anything they can't profit 20 from. That's a perfect example, Dan, perfect example. Trina, I have low-cost items that I could bundle. Look at those items. Look them up individually. See how quickly they sell. Don't. Here's another mistake everybody makes when they look up item the prices of an item. They just look up at Terra Peak. Well, Terra Peak, I see twenty that sold for ten bucks or twenty bucks, but they're not looking at the active listings. You can't just look at ended listings because yeah, twenty sold. Terra Peaks for a whole year, so that's twenty. That's one less than one a month sold. What if there was 400 of those items up and only 20 sold? You, you've got to look at both both ones. You can't just look at one or the other. You can instantly do that on Terapeak too. So, um, Trina, back to Trina for just a second. If if those items are maybe going to sell for four bucks a piece or something, and your profit margin is going to be two bucks, but if you put five of them together on one sale, your profit margin in their two dollars a piece that's ten bucks instead. So would you rather maybe sell one or two of them for two bucks a piece or, or for sure or almost for sure sell all of them for 10 bucks for the whole lot? I'd rather get the 10 bucks immediately from all of them instead of trying to nickel and dime a $2 sale, truthfully. If you have no other inventory, fine, list whatever you got, cheap items or not. But again, you're just you're, you're occupying time. If you don't have anything, do what you got to do. But if you've got stuff to list, prioritize the stuff that's going to give you the highest profit first. Profit margin. That, that's that, If you're listing the $2 items or whatever and you've got $10 items sitting there, what are you listing the $2 items for? Stop listing the $2 and list the highest stuff first, especially if you're new. If you've got to turn over stuff to pay your bills, why are you messing with the $2 items? I see it all the time, all the time. In fact, we raise even... When we stop selling at a certain point the the cheaper stuff, our dog's upstairs going off. When we stop selling the cheaper stuff, the stuff we decided that would probably sell, I raised the price to ten bucks or higher for all the cheap stuff as well. I've never went back and lowered it, and we still sell that stuff. 
an offer comes in, I get what I used to have as the, the offer price. So I'm getting more for those items. So nothing in our store is under $9.99. <clears throat> Obviously, I don't list new items below a certain point. If they're already up, I just keep them. Why would I waste the time that I invested to list something? If, Like with Trina, if you can bundle, use one of the listings you already have up and just you know download a copy of the, the photos from the other listings and just re-upload them to the one listing. So you're not going to lose the one listing. You'll lose the other ones, but you just have to alter the title and just download a copy and then re-upload those to the listing. <clears throat> so you can easily bundle them without taking a new photo. Just change the title to a lot of five, a lot of 10 or whatever else you're doing. That's all you gotta do. And I do that all the time. You don't have to end all those listings. Just keep one running and then download the images. That's all you gotta do. Uh, Dragon Bricks. Uh, yep, I have to work on not to buy low profit items. <laughs> I pass up a lot of stuff, and sometimes I pass up stuff that there is a profit margin there, and it might be a good one for the item, but taking into account China. I don't mess with most pottery and stuff. It takes up too much space to, to store. Shipping it takes a little longer to ship. There's breakage issues and stuff like that, and you know, so I don't mess with certain things. Again, pros and cons. There's too many cons against something like that. In the same area, one vase takes up. I could list and, and store 500 plus pieces of paper. 500 listings I can store in the space of one vase. So uh, pros and cons, my profit margin. If that vase isn't going to get me 450 to $500, why would I even list it? Because again, I can get four to 450 to $500 worth of paper items up in any hour. So again, we're going for the profit margin. Again, I know they're not all going to sell at once, but... If that vase doesn't sell, I've got one item that's tying up space, time, time for photos, time to list, time to package. So it automatically cuts my profit margin down on that item once I equate my time into it. you got to think, where are you spending your time? That's why I don't do a lot of other stuff that I'd love to do is because my time has to go where the profit margin is. That's why I haven't done as many videos or hardly any lately on, on the auction or on the art professor, the, my other channel. I don't even know how many subscribers I got at this point on that other channel, but I'd love to do it. I do artwork all the time, but I don't want to spend the, the time or effort to edit them at this point. You know, I don't make money on the other channel, and that's that's another another issue because, again, I, I've got to weigh the time. Again, that's why my time is so important. I can't risk wasting time. I'm getting older, so I can't risk, you know, in the, the last so many years that I, I've got to put put forth all the extra effort to get the the my revenue up and get enough money stocked in the bank i, I don't want to risk it on stuff that's not making me a return on that investment um the mayor if it doesn't make dollars it doesn't make sense that's a that's a perfect perfect uh comment there yes that's true it's got to make multiple dollars a couple dollars isn't going to cut it you know i could list hundreds of items that are a couple dollars it's going to waste my time <clears throat> prioritize what you're selling. I would bulk up anything that's a couple bucks. It wouldn't be worth your time to list. It wouldn't be worth your time to sit there and monitor and all this other stuff. Just, just it, it doesn't make sense. That's the bottom line. Uh, antiquarian bookman. I started selling on eBay and later took a consignment booth after I collected enough low price items. Have large section now that sometimes makes more than eBay. That can work too. I'm not so much a person on um, booths, but I used to have them. I used to set up in several. And in fact, in one booth I had, or one antique mall, it was a real big one in Meridian. I had quite a few booths there in different spots. You probably didn't even, people who bought probably didn't know they were my stuff here and over there and stuff. Sometimes if you need more space, the one next to you isn't available. So you might have to take a booth in a different aisle or something, which is what we had to do sometimes. I, I, I mean, I made okay, but... If you don't have a prime location, it could hurt you. If they're cheaper items, I don't know. Again, I, I don't want to have to drive out to an antique mall. There's a decent one not too far away, but I'm not looking to do that route, I guess. I'd have to service it and anyway. If you make good money, I more power to you. Uh, I, just, I, I, I just don't like the, the atmosphere anymore. I don't mind shopping in them occasionally. Cha-ching king, welcome, welcome. 
Oh, let's pop on down here. I have not considered time at all. I'm not even making back the money lost by taking Friday off work. This seems so common sense. Yeah, I mean, as I said, most people do not add time into their, their profit margins. They're not looking at the bottom line. The, the Again, profit margin is honestly the most important aspect of this. Nothing else really. Your feedback means nothing if you're not making any money. If, you're, if you've got bad feedback and you're not making money, you know, your store is going to be dead. Obviously, the bad feedback might be causing you not to make money, but if you're not making money, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Nothing else does. Uh, let's see here. Josh, I routinely list 12 items with offers accepting at $10, shipping not included. Yeah, if I was going to take list a $10 item, if I knew I'd get $10, I'd probably list it at $29.99. Again, depending on how many you've sold and stuff like that. Just because a handful of people might have sold something for 10 bucks, I don't assume that's all I could get out of it. I routinely sell things that other people have sold for two and three times what they sold it for. That's my end up price. I'm, somebody might sell something for 10 I might get 30 bucks the very next week for that same item. you got to understand the perceived value. Most people don't look up the sold items if it's... Uh, one-offs or vintage antiques most people don't know uh, if it 30 bucks might be good to the person who's buying it from you to somebody else only nine bucks may have been good for that same item we just don't sell items less than 12 uh, 12 dollars my time is just too valuable to do that if something proves to fall below that i give it uh, to other sellers who are just starting out uh, antiquarian bookman. I rent three booths now at local shop. I pay for the booths, ten percent of the house, and credit card fees. Yeah, if you're unaware, if you sell an antique mall, most of the ones I've ever done, you pay the monthly fees, and you're giving them ten percent. So it's like just like on eBay, you're giving, you're probably spending about the same in fees for a booth as you would for maybe an anchor store or something like that. It depends on the size of the booth and all that stuff. But that's probably a good analogy comparing those two together. In my book. Um, let's see here. Let me slide down. Oop, my feed just bounced. Let me see if I can get to back where we were. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I'm lost now. Where are we at? Hang on, let me get back to where I was trying to find where I lost my spot. Okay, here we go. Uh, Kelly, you can be successful selling cheap items. Depends on what you see as success and where you want to take your hobby, hustle, side business. Cheap items can work if you've got bulk of that same item. If I've got a replenishable that I saw on Amazon that I'm only making $2 a piece, $2 per unit, but I've got 1,000 units selling a week, sure, Sure, cheap items are great. Volume of those cheap items is great. If if let's say I have fifty of the same item, but the item's only gonna it's only worth two dollars, but I've got fifty of them, it's worth my time to create one listing and sell all fifty through that one listing. That's a different take on that. If I got one item that's worth two dollars, all different items are worth two dollars, I'm not gonna waste the time on a two dollar item. Again, because I can only list so many of those up in an hour. If I can only list 40 is something for $2 a piece, that's 80 bucks. I can list 450 to $500 worth of, of other items all day long at the same for the same amount of time. Why would I do the $2 items? It makes no sense for me anyway. Unless, again, I've got 50, 100, or a quantity of the exact same item, even if it's only $2, and I can just keep adding one to the quantity. I never have to create a second listing, and I just keep adding one, keep adding one, keep adding one. That's another reason why I do zero quantity. Because I, I try not to list all the amounts that we have. Let's say I've got 100 of something and no one else has it. I'm not going to list 100 as the quantity for sale. I'm going to list one. And when that one sells, I just change that zero to one. I don't have to relist it or anything. It's always active right after it ends. And I just resell, I, you know, list another one of those. I, I've been doing that for months for many, many items. I've got buttons that, it, that, again, I've got a hidden factor in there. So I know how many I have just by looking at the listing, even if I'm not home. But those are the only exceptions I would ever do for a cheaper item. Again, I, $2 items, it's not worth listing a $2 item if you've got $10 items. 
it's not worth listing five two dollar items when you could sell them together for 10 bucks easily easier than you could selling them individually you've got to weigh all of those options in there i, I promise you what i'm telling you now is what every single true honest not some of these youtubers who pretend they're resellers but real resellers who that's all they do that's what they're doing exactly what i'm telling you they've done that through everything they sell you can do whatever you way you want but i promise you everybody that i know who's really successful like us does what i just said they don't list those two dollar items because it's not worth their time my time is worth more than 80 bucks an hour it just is so I'm not going to list $80 worth of items because I'm listing $2 profit items, 40 of them. I'm going to list 40 $10 items or 40 $20 items. I'm going to bundle those other ones up so I'm still listing $400, $450, dollars worth of items. Some of those may be bundled $2 items into one single listing. Again, that's the best way to approach those cheaper items. By the time you take photos and upload, and again, you're, you're killing your time. $80 an hour versus $400 an hour. It's a no-brainer. List the higher value items you can right away. Get them up and, and worry about those. If you got nothing else to list, sure, go ahead and list the $2 items because you're just going to use your extra free time because you don't have stuff to list. If you got stuff to list, list the high stuff, high dollar stuff. When we buy anything, I don't care what I buy. If I buy 100 records, 500 this, 500 that, whatever I'm buying, I list part of it to get my money back immediately. That's why I've got so much inventory because I get my money back like day one almost for anything I sell. If I purchase a real good lot of something and I know I can sell one item immediately, I do it that right after I get home. It might be sold before the day is even done. I got all my money back for the big massive purchase purchase that I get, like the 78 records. I sold a 78 record to somebody who watched one of my videos and wanted one of the records. It paid for all my gas time and my, my son's um, payroll for driving out there with me. For one item, one single item, and I'm done. All of, everything else is free now. I, I know that's my take, but uh, let's see where we at. Lelan Lake Ford. Hey, Lance, Cindy, how are you two doing? Hopefully, you two are doing well. Again, tomorrow will be the next Patreon video. It should be up early tomorrow. Um, I'm up at six in the morning. I'm here in house tomorrow. I'm gonna relax, so I'm not going anywhere tomorrow after all the. Uh, the models and the, the moldings done uh, this week. <clears throat> um, Paul Carl Cards, I've worked out a method that makes listing thousands of trade cards per hour possible. I don't know how you'd list thousands unless you had people doing it for you. You can't even take a scan of a card, a thousand cards in an hour, truthfully, but... The only other thing would be upload through a CSV file a spreadsheet of them. You'd still have to upload the photos. Uh, let's see here. Texas lady, welcome. Good evening. Well, thank you very kindly. And Nelson Kennedy, bottom line. Bottom line is important. Profit margin is important. Uh, you rock my always thought about having a bookstore, but realized how much cheaper. The reselling boomer, good, good evening, welcome. Wet town in Australia. Welcome from the other side of the globe. Yeah, I, I, that's just what I said, Excel. That's a CSV file, just as I was saying. You can't do a thousand listings in an hour. And if you're CSV filing up your, your listings, there could be errors, there could be glitches, and they don't come with photos. So it's there's I, I've done CSV files for 10 years. You can't do a 1,000 an hour that I'm aware of. I've never seen anybody, and I'm talking about people who are doing a million in sales on a weekly basis. I've never seen it. Um, yeah, I'd have to see that. You've got all the extra time to do all that. I can't see a thousand items in an hour. I, 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 I would have to see that in person. Yeah, see, you're not Paul Carl Cards. You're talking about the the file uploading to eBay or whatever in four minutes. You've got all the other time to fill out that spreadsheet that you're not counting in there. You can't fill out a spreadsheet with a hundred titles in four minutes. 
It's not physically possible. So again, I don't know how, you know, I see your automation comments here, but I don't, I've worked with Excel for 25 years, since 94, not more than that, since 94, 95. I know every little glitch, every little thing I've, all my, I do all my taxes through Excel. I, I do everything, my inventory, purchases, every business I run is has an Excel spreadsheet all tied together and my P&L is at the end of the day. I've used Excel. I know I can do the formulas in my sleep. I know all the patches. I know how to put PHP into it. You know, I've got a, 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 a IT degree as well, too. I, I can't. There's no way you can do a thousand listings in an hour and type all that. And that means you've got to have a thousand titles typed up in an hour. And that, you're, uh, again, uh, you, you're not counting all your time invested. That would be my honest opinion. Oh, uh, let's see here. Again, you're not listing hundreds of items an hour because you've got to do all. When I say I can list 50 items in an hour, that counts every aspect of the listing. That includes my photo, my scan time, everything. So in that hour, I don't have to do anything else other than that. That's including my, my, my titles and everything in that hour. There's no way you can type up 1,000 titles in an hour. You're missing your time invested. Because you've got to type up that Excel spreadsheet. That's time. That's there's there's more time than you're adding up. You, you at most you're you're looking at sixty or so items most an hour. No matter what you're doing, no matter what process, unless the computer's automatically creating your titles, your prices, picking the category for you as well, it's impossible, impossible. Uh. Uh, too glassy, sisters. What not really depends on what you are selling. It has gone very well for us. You see, if you're not comp if you're not selling it on on eBay, you don't know if it's going well for you. If you're not selling, I can't sell like to like items. I'm always going to get more money for every single thing I sell, and it's going to be more practical to sell it on eBay than it ever would be to sell it on whatnot from what I sell, from what I sell. I, there, but it's, it's night and day. There's no way on earth I'll get, I sold records on, on whatnot that the highest price I could get was 30 bucks on eBay. I could have got 60 all day long, any day of the week. So again, it, it may depend on what you sell, but I'm not going to sell the cheaper stuff that's, that's, that's leftovers or big box lots and stuff. I might as well just sell it on high bid and have better security personally. High bid's just as good, way better, and honest, in my opinion, than, than whatnot as of now. Yeah, sure, it's not the same format, but I don't care about the format. Um, yeah, and you're saying about Excel formula to generate image URLs. Well, you've got to have the images uploaded somewhere. Just because you scan them, they're not anywhere. They're just on your, your PC or your laptop. So again, you're missing all that other time. You see, you've got to type in the titles. You can't type in more than 50 titles in an hour. That's your whole point. You can't do that. So you're missing, your, your time is, is totally skewed on what you've got going on. Well, I already do, everybody who does Excel probably, you know, just cut and paste or, you know, control V, control C down the whole line. You can do a whole batch all at once. But again, you, you've, if they're postcards, you've got cities and states and all that stuff's different. The circa time frame is different. It's just not possible. Uh, Vin Chris Collection. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Jeff Loft. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in house. Boat Nut, uh, 1984. Uh, product returns making everybody happy. Yeah, you're going to live with some of that, unfortunately. Andrew Tellentree, good day from Australia. Welcome. Good to have you. And we're going to end it here in just a few minutes. I'm looking at the clock. Uh, Nelson Kennedy, well, thank you very kindly. If you want to be serious, take it serious from day one. Um, 
I knew I, I had to make the money. I knew that this had to go. So I started off like this was going to be a lifelong thing. I didn't go half, pardon me, I'll say a bad word, half-ass at all from day one. I went full steam, all efforts from day one. If I meant I put in 18 hours a day, that's what I did. You know, and, and it's it's worked out again. I'm I'm not going to let it beat me, I guess. So you got to be positive. you got to have that drive. JDad303, I'm in the Ohio, Michigan area. Bose Garage, can I change my personal eBay account with 100% positive to a business account and keep my feedback? Yes. You can upgrade it to a business account at any time you want. Um, VL Treasures. Thanks, Don, for all the great videos. Well, thank you very kindly. Thanks, Kelly, for helping out uh, Bo's Garage. Tim White, how are you doing? T.W. Storm. Well, thank you. Thank you very kindly, Paul's Vintage Halls. Henry S. Yeah, I would never own a brick and mortar at all. That would be that would be overhead would kill you immediately. It's just like I had a video the other day about um, inventory. We've probably got, if I count stuff that I'm not even that's still locked in boxes, I probably got close to four million in inventory. Obviously, I don't have four million dollars worth of value out of them. That would be the list price. But the the um, where was I going with this? Where's the comment that was on there? Yeah, but w like brick and mortar, if the storage fees. If I was selling clothing, I'd have to pay for storage. Um, immediately, the, the minute you go to storage, you're like $5,000 a year you're going to get hit with. And again, you got to include your time into that. Your drive time to the storage facility, your drive time from there to the post office. Because most storage facilities, you can't have your products picked up at. You won't be there when they're picked up. I have to see them, or at least have it on video when they're picking it up, just so I can prove that they picked up. You know? Uh, let's see here. Noah D. The longer a tail your items have, the smaller they need to be. It depends on obviously how much space you have, but generally, uh, I wouldn't have a ton of long tail items if they were big. I'm not going to do electronics or anything like that. Paper's just perfectly suited for it. Pins, um, stuff, Disney pins. I know somebody who sells Disney pins for a living. They've got hundreds of them on cards, and they've got them all numbered and numbering system per row and all this other stuff. So it, it doesn't matter what you sell, but if you're going to sell a lot of it and keep you know, long tail items, yes, you are correct. You have to have either small items or a ton of space. And if you're storing them in some other place and you're going to have to rent, again, minimum, I'm going to tell you, is probably $5,000. It's going to cost you $5,000 a year the minute you go to a storage building, no matter what. Because you got to have electricity, you got to have in a climate-controlled building if you're going to store merchandise, especially vintage, especially media items, especially you know vintage collectibles, even clothing. You don't want a musky smell. You don't want the temperature fluctuating. It creates moisture, chances of mildew, and on and on and on and on. If you store them in bags and they're not airtight bags, you can get moisture in the bags. They can ruin the items. Always have your your all your merchandise in a climate controlled building and i know there's youtubers well i run it out of my garage i do this i do that well you open the garage door in the winter there's snow and I, it's just just not it's not practical especially if for those who don't store them in closed lidded containers and store them in the open spiders and bugs and you know it's just it's not not what you should be doing you should take care of it like it's your treasures your personal treasures anything you're selling you know store them properly even inside of a climate controlled building uh, Green Giant 311 uh, views are like someone walking by your store. Exactly. And store watchers. The, a person doesn't have to click on your item or even look at, at look inside the listing to watch it. You can watch it from the view from the gallery view page. So that's why you'll see watchers and no views. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not eBay screwing around with anything. Sometimes people just scan it through. Maybe they'll figure out, ah, maybe I'll look at it later and they'll just click watch and then just keep looking. So they're not going to waste time opening and looking at it or opening up another tab to look at some other item. Uh, hey, Big John. Good evening, good evening. All I ever think about is Big Bad John, the song. 
Just in time flipping, how are you doing? In, re in a recession type of time, the company that holds on to the company and can keep it afloat in bad times usually does well after a recession. Yeah, I, a recession for the normal seller could hurt, though. I'm going to tell you right off the bat. If you're selling everyday items that the average person is going to need but doesn't have the money for, you're going to have some hurt coming for you if, if a recession hits the way people talk about. If you're selling vintage collectibles, your buyers are not an average person. Your buyers are somebody who has expendable income. And for the most part, most people like that don't usually have an issue when a recession comes. When, when stuff was down, um, like with recession-wise in 20, uh, 2008, 2007, when you know the stock market and the bubble burst and all that stuff, I was still doing just fine. Uh, again, it depends on what you sell. I've moved, again, this is another reason why I sell what I sell. Profit, profit margins, clothing, it's seasonal. The, the overseas shipment, I know people say, well, it's it's cold somewhere, it's hot somewhere in the world, you know, all the time. Well, it's not feasible nowadays with VAT and everything to sell. Overseas sales have dropped for almost everybody that I know. I still sell overseas, don't get me wrong. I sold some today to England. It's only a couple select countries. It's only small items. So I'm not worried about missing out on overseas sales. That stuff just doesn't happen. It's... The recession, or the recession isn't going to affect those either way because people aren't buying from overseas because of that, the costs, and all the other crap. Uh, so if you hang on through this, yeah, you'll probably do fairly well. If you can manage to make your revenue and get your money coming in and still be hitting those profit margins through a recession, you'll, you'll, you're fine. You weathered the worst part of it. I know a lot of sellers aren't making it through right now through this summer. It's, it's crushed a lot of people who have three, four, five people a, a week probably tell me they can't continue to do this because they're not making enough to pay their bills. I live, I, I mean, I didn't sleep. I just did listings. Twenty, Whatever I could do, I was buying and then listing. If I spent six hours, eight hours sourcing, I spent that much time at least listing those same items when I got home after sourcing all day long. And that's what I did to keep it going. We lived, we lived literally item to item. I'd sell an item just to pay a bill. So don't, you know, I'm, I'm, right in the boat there with you but i didn't give up i just put in an ungodly amount of hours that most people wouldn't want to do well i could have worked for somebody else and, and put in less hours yeah but this is a long process you're not going to start a business and then two months down the road you're perfect you're fine everything's rolling in it's all coming in it's 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 a long-term pipe dream for many but it's a long-term goal i didn't say hey i'm going to be a multi-million dollar seller on eBay or something or in, in general reseller, it just happened. I never planned a date where I'm going to have this much up or do this much in sales. I've just worked very hard at it and, and said if, if you put in the effort and the work, you keep at it, it's going to give you you know something back out of it. And that's what happens. I think everybody that I can think of who's done this and put in the effort like we have has made something of it. Maybe they're selling something completely different like us than what they started off. That didn't work for them. They changed. You keep selling the same thing and you're not getting a return on it. You need to switch up what you're doing. It's not working. You know. Anyway, we're going to have to cut it off here. I know I always say I'm going to do that, but let's see if we can get to one more. Anytime, Dave. Midwest Picker again in the house. Dave's a real good guy. Uh, Jonathan Britton, sourcing is a problem here, so I've been saving up inventory all year and just now getting... It on eBay or getting it eBay gone. The best time to source is almost done. Summer, there's more stuff available. We buy the majority of it, obviously in bulk, and I buy a large chunk of it in summer because the people come to me in summer more often than than not. Buy it when you can, but I'm not not listing it. It's all going up as we get it, so we're we're still having a steady flow stream online while we're still buying, you know, merchandise. I don't really need to buy, honestly, but. I keep saying that, and then I keep ending up with new merchandise. Um, anyway, we're going to let it go at that. Uh, hey, Don. Don Wright, welcome in the house as well. Let's let's end it off here. I could keep going on all day. I know. I'm sorry. I do, do ramble a lot. If you are enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. I got 187 people in-house right now, 118 thumbs up. 
I know I'm terrible about that, but uh, please slam some love for the channel here. Tomorrow's video is already shot. There will be another YouTube membership video. I do have a YouTube membership here. If you're not sure what you are interested in, Patreon actually has more benefits than the YouTube membership, but you don't have to leave YouTube. Everything is right there. It's all built in. So if you want the YouTube membership, that would be easier, but you don't have email and all that stuff that you get on Patreon. Those in Patreon who have emailed me knows that I, I give you a real good response. I try to answer thoroughly. If I don't know, I tell you I don't know, which is in certain areas. I'm not a sports fan, so whenever somebody asks me about sports, I don't know much about it or video games these days. I only know vintage video games, um, ColecoVision, that kind of stuff. Virtual Boy, I know those too, the old Segas and NES. But anyway, we're going to let you go. I appreciate everybody coming on. There will be videos on every platform, YouTube, YouTube membership, and Patreon tomorrow. All shot. They should be up early before 4. Uh, if you have any uh, concerns or anything else, feel free to post them below. We'll try to at least check those out today. But again, I thank you all for coming on, and I hope you all have a good day.